In this video, I'm going to talk about LDP authentication. LDP sessions are TCP sessions. You know this. And TCP sessions can be attacked by spoofed TCP segments. To protect LDP against such attacks, you can use Message Digest 5 or MD5 authentication. MD5 adds a signature, we call it MD5 Digest, to the TCP segment. And the MD5 Digest is calculated for the particular TCP segment using the configured password on both ends of the connection. The configured MDP password is never transmitted. This would leave a potential hacker having to guess the TCP sequence numbers and the MD5 passwords. In Cisco IOS, you can configure MD5 for LDP by configuring a password. Okay, but how? I want to talk about these topics in this scenario and I want to give an explanation about this, how we can configure authentication for LDP. As I mentioned before, the configured LDP password finally results to or convert to MD5 digest. And MD5 digest is sent in the TCP session establishment. Okay, let's check the process. First, we should check the neighborship in our scenario. I configured interfaces IP address, enable, enabling them. And again, and after that, I configured OSPF as routing protocol. And finally, I enabled the MPLS. Let's check it. In R1, show MPLS neighbor or show MPLS LDP neighbor, okay? We have neighborship with the R2, and in R2, show MPLS LDP neighbor. We have neighborship with rotor one and also rotor three. And in the rotor three, show MPLS LDP neighbor. We have neighborship with rotor two and rotor four. And finally, in rotor four, show MPLS LDP neighbor. We have neighborship between rotor four and three and four and five and finally in rotor five show mpls ldp neighbor we have neighborship with rotor four and no authentication is enabled now let's check it for example you can use show mpls ldp neighbor here we don't have any option for authentication but if you use show MPLS LDP neighbor detail with detail keyword, I am now in R1, you can see that password none is not configured, not required. And known password in this time is used. Okay. This obvious that password is not required. And also we didn't enable password and the authentication process doesn't occur. Okay, I want to enable authentication with different methods. The first things I want to mention here is this option. Password is not required by default. This means that password configuration or password sending, MD5 sending is not required by default is not mandatory by default we can change this behavior to password should every time be configured and password is required how we can enable the password requirement it's so easy let's do the configuration first i want to write the comments here rotor config we have a command mpls password required you can use an acl with four acl i will explain it 
With this command, you force the authentication for this router. When you configure a router with MPLS password required command, this means every router that wants to be a peer for this router should first authenticate them. And after that, they can reach to neighborship status with this router. For example, let's explain it. In R1, we configured this command. MPLS password is required. Okay. R1 connect to the R2. And in R2, we don't change the default behavior. Okay. Required. And, but in the, look at here. By default, the password is not required. This is the default behavior. And because of that, when R2 in default behavior, this means that R1 doesn't accept the neighborship with R2. Let's check it. For example, in R1, I use this command. MPLS password, okay? MPLS LDP password requires. MPLS LDP password required, okay? And here I want to change it. MPLS LDP password because the authentication is for LDP. And then check the result. The neighborship in R1 now is down state in down state. Why? Because the session's MD5 passwords change and now MD5 protection is required for neighborship. No password configured. You can see that. In R1, show MPLS LDP neighbor detail. We don't have any neighborship. Why? Because in R1 now authentication or password authentication is necessary for the neighborship. Okay. Here now we have required option. But what is happening in R2? R2 can't be neighbor with R1, but it because it doesn't require to authenticate with R2. R2 accept R1 request, but because R1 doesn't accept the request of R2, finally no neighborship between them is occurring. Let's check it in R2. Show MPLS LDP neighbor. Before that, we check the result. Look at here. Received error notification from peer. Okay, hold time, hold down timer expired. Why? Because we missed password or MD5 authentication. And because of that, R1 doesn't send any packet to R2 because R1 doesn't accept R2 as neighbor. Because of that, finally, hold time is expired and the neighborship is down. Show MPLS LDB neighbor in R2. You can see only we have one neighbor and that is R3. This is the first part. Requirement or not required, not required or not required for password authentication. Okay, let's change the R2 the status to required. In R2, I use confd router or MPLS LDP password required. What is happening now? Because R2 now is required for MPLS LDP password, the neighborship between R2 and R3 will be down. And what is the behavior that we experience between R1 and R2? Let's check it. MPLS LDP password required. You can see the LDP neighborship with the rotor tree now is down in its down state. And also for rotor one, we don't have neighborship. Let's check it. Show MPLS LDP neighbor. In R2, we don't have any neighborship. Why? Because the, uh, the authentication process between R1 and, and R2 should be a care. But in this time, no password is configured in both of them. And as a result, we don't have any neighborship or peer neighborship between R1 and R2. Don't forget the configuration of MPLS LDP password required 
doesn't mean that if 